Well, welcome to season two of uh, Tim and Lenny's podcast. Yeah. I don't even know if we have a name. Not yet. We're working on trying we to figure out names. how we're going to do that. <laughs> that's okay. We've got content, and yeah. I think that's what that's more important. So. And what I'm excited about this content is I, I this is something you stirred like when I first started working here. It was like this was stirred in your heart. Yeah. Even well before that, that this things that we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, so I guess the big reveal of the season is we're going to be talking about vibes. Yeah. And uh, I love the idea, this cultural idea right now. Um, vibes is such like a huge like piece, especially of like youth culture, mm. where like students or or. Um, young people i i guess you'd say um you know they they're looking for vibes they're looking for like something to vibe with and i just i wanted to lean into that kind of cultural piece but take us take a stand um or a perspective from scripture um based on the fruit of the spirit in galatians mm-hmm. and not so much i think we hear kind of how they apply to us this is how I'll experience love. This is how I'll experience joy or peace or patience, like those kind of things. Um, and this is more about um, the vibe that we send out. If we're called to, you know, live a certain way, and um, then does our life reflect that in how in in the in the way we send out, we've got the dog with us today, so. <laughs> Keep going. Never mind. Back to it. Here we go. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> uh, oh, what I was saying? Yeah, just keep going. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was just kind of talking about, you know, the vibe that we send out mm. and looking at the fruit of the Spirit as being that, that kind of marker of, um, you know, when I'm at the grocery store or when I show up with a group of friends or a family function or whatever, um, am I emitting love, mm. joy, peace, like those things in those situations? Mm. And what does it look like as we kind of over the, over the series, mm-hmm. take a look at each one of those and kind of talk through how those can look and be applied in culture, in conversations, uh, in the workplace or at home. Um, and I just, I, I really like this idea of it's not just what's happening like in me, mm-hmm. but it, it's what's, I'm, it's also about what is happening through me. Mm. Um, so uh, it's definitely an itch that I've been wanting to scratch for, for a few years. I mean, when I was running the youth ministry, um, it, was some, it was a series that I was gearing up to do and then um, made the decision to step down and haven't really had like a platform to, um, to talk through some of these ideas that, that I've been chewing on. So looking forward to being able to dive into it um, over the next however many weeks this series ends up being, you know. But. Yeah. Well, and I know for me, like in my life, when you started talking to me about this, it I've, it's I don't know, for the first probably 15 years, maybe 13 years of my Christian faith, mm-hmm. um, I looked at, like when you talked about maturity in Scripture and talked about, you know, achieving maturity and living up to this maturity, I always looked to pastors as like, oh, they're the ones I need to be, looking up to and living Mm -hmm. up to what they say and how they live their life. And I mean, in some ways I think we're supposed to be like that in that example. Um, But all all I ever really heard was, well, you don't want to lust. You don't want to lie. It was Mm -hmm. always the shooting on, you know, it was always this, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, And I really think, and I look at Christian faith and I look, I mean, I don't look at Christ a lot of being shooting on people. He says he would, a lot of times he'd go, this is the way the world works. Mm -hmm. Here's how it actually works. You want to be a leader. You got to be a servant. Yeah. You know, when you get Slapped in the face, turn the other cheek. When, I mean, he's stating facts as they should be, bringing yeah. about the reality as they should be. Um, and it's the way of the world, the way of thinking. And it's Jesus rails against both the far ends of the spectrum on either end. He rails against religious yeah. people. And a lot of the New Testament <clears throat> is written against Colossians. It's all about not living up to, quote, unquote, these standards that are being set by these yeah. religious elites, but allowing the Spirit 
to produce these kinds of fruit in your life. Philippians talks a lot about that as well, and that we are pursuing this maturity, and that maturity, like this measure of maturity, is 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 living out the fruit of the Spirit, this vibes that we're living out all the time. And it's yeah. a constant that's happening. And when we aren't living out um, this lifestyle, which I, mean, I don't know how else to call it, but this identity that's being rooted in Christ and being rooted in Christ, our fruit that should be being produced by the Spirit, mm-hmm. which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I think I just named all nine. Yeah. <laughs> um, which, by the way, is what we're going to be talking about over the next nine weeks, really. Yeah. And that when we look at <clears throat> that is what, here we go, I'm going to do it, what pastors do, go should be, <laughs> yeah. should be the measure of our faith. Not what we do or don't do when it comes to quote unquote moralities of culture. Right. But what we should be and how we should be living out our lives in our everyday rooted in Christ that these fruit all of them, love, joy, peace, patience, it's all nine is a fruit of the Spirit. It's what it says in yeah. Galatians, um, are what are to be being produced. And so if, for example, I'm doing something that quote unquote is good, and I've done this so many times in my life, like I'm a pastor, I'm going to go be, okay, I remember, I'll tell you the story. And this is kind of the measure of where God is like showing me like, this is where you are maturing in and you have a lot more to grow in. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was a youth pastor getting ready for camps. Do you remember those years? Oh, man. I, okay. And the stress building up to go into camps, especially if you're running the camp and and the youth group, your youth group going up, so yep. both. And I remember getting ready to go and trying to pack up the house to go do a good thing, a right thing. Yeah. But all <sighs> around me is chaos. There isn't peace. There isn't patience. There isn't kindness. And I would mm-hmm. justify it by saying I'm on mission mode and I could be a real jerk to get and accomplish the mission yeah. when my vibes, <laughs> what I was vibing to my wife, to my kids and the people around me was angst, chaos, anger, frustration, disappointment, a fear of not being successful. I mean, all of these yeah. things, but it was justified because I was a pastor and I was doing the right thing. Yeah. And in our lives, what the wake of those decisions and behaviors that I was making wasn't emanating, wasn't vibing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or even self-control in my fits of rage and my anger and all of these crazy things that were having major negative effects on my wife and my family. I didn't walk in asking for forgiveness and Mm. I wasn't hurt or broken that my behaviors were hurting my family because I felt justified in those actions. Yeah. And so really, and that's, that was good. Let's see, eight, nine years ago that I look back now and my heart was broken at the time only because Pam was mad at me Mm. because Because of of the consequence. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't looking back. Now I'm grieving in my soul because the wake of decisions and how I lived my life at that time wasn't producing because I wasn't cleaving and holding fast to abiding in Christ and allowing his spirit to produce those things, you know, conversely just this weekend. And I, I'm only giving you this paradox Mm -hmm. for me. And maybe paradox isn't the right word, but, um, the pendulum pendulum, since talking about last week, the contrasting last season, um, is that we got robbed. Our church got robbed. Did I tell you that we got robbed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you briefly kind of mentioned it in your uh, voicemail. it, It kind of, and I remember for years, anything, I would misplace my phone or my wallet or something. My wife would be like, I'd be, somebody stole it. That'd be my first thing I'd say. Really? Somebody stole it, always. And man, would just like, stop saying that. <laughs> like, why do you keep doing that? It's like, it's never stolen. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You just <laughs> oh, put it in the wrong place, you dummy. So over this last year, I've been practicing not saying the words, it's stolen. Because it's yeah. not a joke. It's not funny being very careful with my words. And so I just stopped. And so I don't like act like I'm freaking out. Oh, it's stolen, blah, blah, blah. So I literally Sunday morning, because I went on vacation to mm-hmm. Florida, uh, 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 on our little birthday trip, which is super fun. So I decided not to bring my computer with me on the trip. And I thought I had left it at the office. Mm. So Sunday morning, I came in to go look for the computer. My computer was gone. And then instead of thinking it was stolen, I thought, oh, I just probably left it at home. <laughs> the one time it was stolen. The one stolen. time it was stolen. You <laughs> cried wolf on yourself so many times. <laughs> That now you condition yeah, yourself out of it. Yeah, and then throughout the day, finding that you know our our church, we ended up getting robbed and computer, a few other things were stolen, plus a buddy's car. I mean, oh, it's such, such a frustrating experience. But um, I didn't cuss once. I really didn't freak out. Paul was here, which was really great, and Heather and Hadassah were at the house. We're having lunch, and like it all came together. I finally talked to so you know somebody is like, oh no, I didn't pick it up. It's like wait, we got robbed. And at the end of it, that night I was laying in bed with Pam, and she's like, wow, honey. That was very different from what I've experienced from 
you in the past. Yeah. You know, and it was, I made the conscious Ooh, I got choice. like chills. That's so cool. Yeah. It was by God's grace. Yeah. It was one of those things where over the last, I don't know, 10 years, I'm not perfect yet, but I've been practicing this way of like, okay, I'm going to abide in Christ and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And in this situation, I can be thankful that God is in this difficult, frustrating time. We'll figure out the future. If it costs some money, it costs some money. But what is worth more valuable than gold is this new life in Christ, is this new attitude, is this new working of God's spirit in my life over the years that I've been like, okay, I'm going to abide and cleave and see what is produced. Love for the person that's robbed our stuff, Mm. you know, joy in the midst of the suffering and frustration that like, we'll have fun with this. We'll call the police. We'll figure this thing out. And and, um, peace, which was really weird that there was this thing of peace, even with the kids. And I was, I could feel myself wanting to move towards being frustrated, angry, but it wouldn't fix anything. The situation was still the situation, but it didn't come from willpower either. It was literally like this place like, okay, Lord, over the last few years, something you've been developing in abiding Mm. allowed me to emanate a vibe that Paul wanted to hang out with me for the rest of the day and just be there as we were trying to figure this out together. And, you know, I didn't feel isolated from Pam or the kids and they came home and that night we sat around the couch. It was like, guys, you know, this is what happened and we were going to pray. And we, I sat with the kids and we prayed in a way of peace. Peace. And, yeah. and I, I'm always sitting here not to toot my own horn, horn, horn. <laughs> but I feel like this scripture and this series that you're wanting to bring is pertinent. Yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. in, in Christian culture and in society, we're looking for what does love mean? Yeah. And how do we find the root of what love is and live from that place in mm. those seeds and allow that fruit to be birthed in our life? It's not going to happen overnight. This is a lifelong process of pruning, of growing, of being tempted, of being tested that will trim us back and then uproot, cut certain things out of our life to then keep growing to the fullness that God has for us and yeah. live a life that Jesus says he's come is to live a life abundantly. And so I, I didn't think I was going to talk much. Sorry. And I went no, on that you're rant, good, but, but simply because I feel fine that I'm so excited to jump into these things. Because oh yeah. Defining biblically. What is love? What is love? Right. <laughs> Baby, Wait. you don't hurt me. Do, <laughs> nice. do, Thanks do, for finishing do, it. Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's so cool. And you know, we have a couple notes here just as we've been brainstorming. Uh, one of the things that you wrote that I just absolutely loved, um, Life in the spirit will produce a life of the spirit. And mm. I just, I thought that was such a cool way to, to, you know, kind of write that. And life in the spirit produces, right, these things that we're going to be talking about, mm-hmm. not just uh, not just in us, but I think an, a, an overflowing, an abundance of, you know, these these things that, like the mark of maturity for me is not the amount of years spent in the church, it's not the amount of um, degrees someone holds. Um, I'm getting a call. Let's oh, is that what that is? Okay. Dang, you really want to make sure you don't miss calls. <laughs> you know, the mark of maturity um, isn't isn't years in the church, isn't how how long uh, or how many degrees someone has. Um, I think it's or how old someone is. Um, or how long someone's been a Christian doesn't always. I th- I think that these things are kind of like how is love or joy or peace or patience or self control or gentleness like how are those things manifested and sought after in in someone's life? And I think for me that's a mark of maturity. Mm-hmm. You can look at someone and go, wow, like I they can they can teach me all they want from the pulpit. Mm-hmm. Right, you can teach a, a great sermon from the pulpit, but if you show up on Monday and your stuff's gone, you fly off the handle. And I, I would go, that's someone who's knowledgeable, but but you know, like I would I would say has room to grow in maturity. Absolutely. You know for sure. Yeah. Um. So I just kind of like this idea of um challenging ourselves mm-hmm. with taking the time to think through these things, and hopefully challenging listeners, and you know, uh, inviting everyone along in this journey with us yeah. as, as we kind of think through, man, when I'm in the grocery, like patience, Ugh. <clears throat> I went to uh, Walgreens yes, two days ago and I got in line six feet distance mm-hmm. and, you know, and this lady was, she was, you could tell the cashier was a little bit frustrated. Karen. 
full Karen. She was full Karen. Um, and she was like, well, let me go get the other one. Da, da, da. And she's like, you can't step out of line because then you have to get back. Like, I can't just hold it for you. So I just, she, she the Karen like lady looked over at me and was like, oh, he'll, he's fine. Like, da, da, da. And I was just like, I honestly wasn't bothered by it at all. They opened a different register on the other side of the room and I was like oh, I'm just gonna wait for right now you you know the person behind me I was like you can go check out and then I eventually went over to that other register but it was like this why do we get I mean a situation that's so easy to get worked up in and that like the the typical like no one would be I wouldn't have been wrong for being upset or yeah. or yeah. or frustrated with how this lady was acting and mm -hmm. you know being impatient with her yeah um but like what's that you know I think as a Christian especially there's this call to if you've been changed then live changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you've been changed then live changed live changed yeah and uh that that to me is part of what this series is um mm -hmm. and whether whether you know listeners if if you are in that place where you've admitted you can't save yourself and you've put your faith and trust in jesus to save you um then you've been changed. So how do we live changed? Mm -hmm. um, and also for for listeners that um, you know haven't come to that place in their faith journey yet, um, that this is still very practical, applicational, you know, just kind of ideas and I think good things to to live by. But but um, with the caveat that you know I think the the fullness of power in this is is Christ in us. Amen. Um, no, dr driving those things, you know. It's so good. I, I have Philippians 1, 6. I want to read a couple of verses here. Oh, yeah. It stirred in my heart over the last few days, That's actually. so good. Did you see that I'd written that verse down? No, I didn't. Bruh, it's right here. Did you really? <laughs> That's, so <funny. laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> God knows, man. Um, and, I, and, I, and it was in my personal devotions, because I'm reading through Scripture, and this is one that came up, I think it was like four or five days ago, and I thought, man, I need to mark this, because... This is the root of what we're talking through is this the level of, okay, what does it mean to grow up? And really part of this podcast actually goes along with the sermon series that we're doing Sundays because I want to really work as a people to um, practice the way of Jesus, practice walking the way the disciples did with Jesus and failing and getting back up and walking in re re uh, uh, repentance and reconciliation with the Lord and seeing God's grace overflow in our lives. Um, because I, I always hear the comment as Christians, they say this all the time, don't pray for patience because you're going to be tested and tempted. You know, it's not like it's going to be an automatic thing. It's a work that we have to do. Yeah. And what I'm saying is through this series, Let's pray for patience. Let's pray for joy. Let's pray for these trials in our life to help us mature and grow these things, but not do it on our own, but do it in community with other people so we can mm. walk this out. So part of my desire, my hope is we're sitting through this. We're going through what love, joy, peace is that we're praying for opportunities to practice these things. So here, Philippians 1, 6, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will mm -hmm. continue his work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ returns. And, I pray that your love, and I love this, will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding, which is kind of what we're going to do with this podcast. Like help us to grow in knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. through your word and through one another. Iron sharpens iron. Verse 10, for I want you to understand what really matters so that you, and that's me being that as well, may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. And this isn't that moral Christianity like I started with, which yeah. might be produced from this, but that isn't our focus. It's not the, the focus of what... I think God was wanting to call from us is here. Verse 11 says, may you always be filled. Here it is with the fruit of your salvation. Yeah. The righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ for this will bring much glory and praise to God. It can only come so from good. Christ. Um, and um, so for me, and I love the fruit of your salvation, that that is what we're working towards is the fruit of salvation is living a life full of the spirit and which is that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, and, um, so I really wanted to just that for me is like, <laughs> those are the exact verses I wrote down. Oh, there you go. It was six <laughs> comma nine through 11. <laughs> like I, I opened it up and I went, no way it did exactly the same. Right. So cool. Um, when I was digging around for notes this morning too to see like if there was any cross contamination with like with something I had written and for whatever reason it didn't show up. So I mean, like I said, I, I really separate. sense that this is God's going to do a major work if if you really are willing to. Well, the Bible says in James, look into the mirror 
and yep. not walk away and not change something that God's spirit wants to work in your soul and in your heart over the next 10 weeks and see something um, new and afresh happen from like it said here in Philippians is that it be, uh, to be, uh, continue the good work that he began in you until mm-hmm. it's finished fully on it. And, and that is just, oh man, I'm so excited because I, I, it's going to be a work and it's hard, dude. It's yeah. hard. Um, but, but it's, it's worth it. I mean, you get to the other, so you get down the road, right? And you go, I mean, think of think of the hard conversations you've had to have, the times you've had to look in the mirror and just go, what the heck? I, that you know, like God change change this in me, mm-hmm. and you put in the work, but you don't really notice it until you look back and you go, wow, I'm a very different person than I than I was. Yeah, and like. It's not like a prideful thing, but it's it's definitely something that you can be proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the verses that I have just kind of to anchor this mm-hmm. series, obviously we're going to be in Galatians talking through the fruit of the Spirit. Um, but for me, um, 2 Corinthians 5, um, that's mm. starting in four, on 14. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And if he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Mm. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. Mm. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, uh, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against them, uh, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. And this is part of that vibe right here. So, I mean, that captures the gospel. It captures this idea of, like, if you've been changed, then live changed. Mm -hmm. And be okay with, like, looking in the mirror and change. Mm -hmm. And then here's the vibes right here. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. That's it. Maybe we should call this podcast ambassador. Right? Ambassadors. I don't even know what that's Um, called, but whatever. And God is making his appeal through us. The weight of that. But like the freedom, because it's not not the fruit of Lenny. You know, it's not the fruit of... It's the fruit of the Spirit Mm -hmm. that like as God is refining and working in us mm-hmm. and we walk forward in the work that he's going to see to mm-hmm. completion. Yeah. Um, and just so cool. We, you know, we implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Does my life and the vibe that I send out of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, mm-hmm. those things, do those speak loud enough to say, be reconciled to God because this is what he wants to produce in your life. Mm. And then 21, um, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That is like, to me, it's just such a powerful um, scripture that, you know, I I personally just wanted to lean into as we're looking at the series Mm -hmm. and, um, and some of those things. There's a handful of other scriptures, but I think I kind of want to leave uh, leave that there and then, you know, um, let that be it. Let's see if I had any, any other notes. Oh, just this idea of like, we're looking for heart transformation, not behavior modification. Yes. And it, and it, cause that's literally what I was thinking in my head. I had this thought was this, the goal of this series, the next 10 weeks is this, these seeds of repentance. When we look in the mirror and we realize, Oh, we don't measure up. Yeah. That these seeds of repentance planted in the gospel, the grace of Jesus, will then bear the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. And so there's going to be a lot of work that when we're confronted with, when we're at the groceries, or when we're cut off, mm-hmm. and not even when we're with our kids, we're by ourselves driving, and that guy wants to get in, and we start to feel our pulse rise yep. up because we are impatient. We don't want to let them in. In that moment, we are sinning. That mm. is sin. And are we able to not justify it by saying they're taking too late? Above all the justifications we've been doing for years, for a guy like me, it's yep. 38 years of behaviors, yep. that I stop and I go, Lord, and Jesus said it in the very beginning of his ministry, and John the Baptist said it, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven mm. is at hand. And are we able to stop and go, whoa, 
my vibe, I mean, the measure of my maturity right now, this vibe I'm yeah. emanating right now is not love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And we are going to take the time to define them biblically. Yes. Because so often I think in culture, we think, oh, love, love is love. Yeah, love is love. But the Bible talks about love and four, there's four different loves they talk about and it's applied yep. in different ways. So we may not go into super deep detail because we don't have a ton of time on this, but we're going to scratch the surface and what the Bible talks about, the foundational truths that yeah. Jesus wants us to live out of, what Christ is the truth. Um, and the Spirit magnifies those things in our lives. But it's going to come through repentance, doing the work, looking in the mirror, humbling too, and this is it, right? Is that this righteousness will be made, will be given to us through Christ. Yeah. Because it was in Him, and it's in that seeds where we plant those and go, Lord, I'm going to trust you to take what was dead and make it alive. Yeah. And that what we produce, this fruit that smells good to the world, I hope it does. I mean, Jesus ultimately was killed because of it. Yeah, <laughs> we will be persecuted. Um, that's a reality and a promise we have. This isn't like all of a sudden we're going to have health, wealth, and finances and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's none of this is the case. The reality is that we look back and we go, "Whoa, my response is one that this is how Jesus would begin to respond. Yeah. Well, he would have responded perfectly in all these situations." <laughs> Let me rephrase that. And I'm practicing that and growing in that. Yeah, yeah. becoming I, more and more like him. That's it. Yeah, from one degree to the next. Amen. And the you know, in in Galatians when it talks about this this list here, at the end of that list it says against these things there's no law. Mm-hmm. You know, like these are I, th- I think ultimately this is what a lot of the world is looking for mm-hmm. and as ambassadors we got to bring that forward yeah. and say this is this is it for me, yeah. you know. So. Yeah. Um so excited. I am too. So excited. I'm so stoked. Uh, we're right at our mark. There we go. Yeah. No. And we're um, so we're looking forward to this, you guys. I hope you're gonna uh, join on the journey with us, pursuing this um, new life, birth in Christ through the work that He's already done on the cross. And yeah. it's not about again this like trying to produce something on our own. Because the reality is, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit produces this fruit, and it's done in us. And do we abide? And it's it's years in the making. Yeah. But we're going to practice for the ten, next ten weeks, and then maybe we'll. See, I don't know what's going to happen after that, but and see what God does. And I guarantee you, in ten weeks, we're going to look back and see work progress in our life if we are surrendering and truly repenting yeah um, where we'll look back and go whoa i would have responded that way but by god's grace i began to respond that way and i'm excited to see god collectively as a group as we journey this together through repentance watching god's new life work in and through us through his truth and his word um, as we practice these things um I, it's going to be amazing to see what god's going to do um just just even if yeah, just between us just, yeah, <laughs> seriously even if it's just us talking through it like i don't know i'm excited to get to just talk through what will this look like cool. and how will it change us or yeah. how, how are we changed as a, yeah. um, as a result? So I'm looking forward to next week when we talk about love yep. and, and the biblical um, truth, you know, and, we, and again, this is pretty easy. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. We're just going to go. <laughs> I think we're going in order. I don't think there's any mystery <laughs> no. to, uh, yep. to what we're going to do yeah. here. And, uh, and I really appreciate it because I know we're both taking a lot of time to really learn and really allow this to work in our own hearts before we even sit here. So come along with us on this journey as we continue to pursue um, this life of vibes, (laughs) um, of living out a vibe of the fruit of the spirit um, rooted in the gospel and the good news of Jesus, because ultimately there's just no way we can pretend. I mean, I'm tired of the church pretending with a veneer uh, and a mask on their face. I want to live honestly, repenting and walking through this and trusting God to grow us through this new season of our lives and see what God does. So yeah, this is all gospel, really. And like, um, if we're if we're trying to do it outside of that, it's like a willpower religion. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix myself, and I'm gonna you know here's my four steps or whatever. And like that couldn't be further from the purpose of kind of like what we want to talk through, you know, and, and, and how we want to go forward. So look right. forward to uh, next week and. Um, That's it. Grace and peace.